Can you guys hear me okay? Let me turn this on. All right. 
check one too. I have no snare. I have no snare in my headphones. was uh, a game that was a game that was played and uh yeah <clears throat> gosh i hope everybody's doing okay i don't want to be out here this long um just gonna go through this get out of here uh we'll probably go well probably more than likely okay we'll go live again tomorrow because i said this before but i'm going to be gone for several days okay so it's going to be a lot of re-recordings or Court, like recordings that we already done so i'm going to be gone from tuesday all the way till monday uh, i won't be back till monday and what's crazy about that is yeah i won't be able to talk to you guys about like i'll be able to talk to you about the end of the season on monday but yeah the, the, the season will be over i think by that time so yeah I won't, I won't be able to experience the last couple games with you but yeah, i'll watch Oh, they missed easy layups and frustrating. It was frustrating. Collins and Trey in particular. I can't believe this team took them to double overtime. I'm sorry. This is, we have such lack of talent. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we're trash or nothing like that. It's just, it, it's like Wimby and then everybody else. Like everybody else is just a role player. Um, turn. Yeah, it was so many turnovers buy merch and make clan happy oh yeah you can do that you can actually do that um i need to add more to the shop honestly but yeah clan the you can do that yeah yeah i just caught up on orders so yeah if you order <clears throat> if you're if you order your shirt is on the way so yeah if you guys want to support please do link in the description get yourself some merch man get yourself several shirts if you want several hoodies get order 50 hoodies 50 of them all right, anyways, yeah, link in the description, clanthemerchfan.com. All right. All right. All right, look, we'll go through this game really quick. I'll just give you my overall thoughts. There, there's no reason to harp on it. There's no reason to drag this one out. Um, it could have went either way, but yeah, we got, we were exhausted. We couldn't hang in there. We could not hang in with them. Um, all right, so first and foremost, I saw someone in the chat say that Malachi Branham is very unclutch. Um, I actually thought that Malachi had a pretty decent game, like a pretty good game. If you're talking about the turnover at the end, first off, the Spurs had so many turnovers. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. 25 to their 10. There's no reason we, we should have like even gotten to a double overtime with that many turnovers like there's no reason the only reason that keeps you in there i think is Wimby. he is a big part of everything uh but malachi with that terrible pass at the end he's super young like i, I think we got to keep that in mind like you can see a huge difference when Devonte graham has the ball or um you know any other veteran has the ball really uh, you can kind of see a, a difference there right like they're a little bit more patient with it i don't think by any means Devonte graham is a better like player than malachi Branham. like i i don't i don't believe that for a second but him being a veteran it does help and he did a really good job of being patient uh and and i mean even blake wesley there was one point in, or one play in particular where it was like dude just wait for wimby to post up like be patient you, you have plenty of seconds on the clock why, why did you immediately just give up and just get it out of your hands to trey jones it's like what, what are we doing like uh the spacing was really poor at times so it, it really just came down to us being a very young team but i will say that the refereeing in this game was really terrible like i will have the 76ers back on this one okay we got some really bad calls too 
But man, the stuff that they were given the 76ers, there's no reason the Spurs should have been in this game. I mean, really, I'm being honest here. There's no reason we should have been in this game, guys. The the, the calls that they were giving or, or calling on 76ers were, were quite laughable. Was I happy with them? Yes, but they, they were pretty bad. They were, it was pretty bad. It was the most tic tacky. It, it was bad. And they, they did it with us too. Like, don't get me wrong. They did it with us too. But man, it's like they keyed in with the 76ers. Um, it, it was rough. Now, Philly didn't get, like, do themselves any, any favors there. Like, the constant complaining and not getting back on defense uh, really, really hurt. But once they locked in on us, it was done. Like, once they actually started playing defense, it was done. Um, but yeah, stop complaining the Spurs are bad. I don't even know what we're talking about. I, I said, I said the 76ers got the bad end of the, the officiating. I, 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 I thought, I thought we got the good end of the officiating. Now I'm just saying we shouldn't have been in this game at all. I'm not complaining. I'm saying we shouldn't have been in this game at all. Um, but anyways, uh, I, any takeaways, let's see, we, we could talk about the negatives are like not even that negative because it's just something we've been dealing with all season long, just being young, making mistakes. It's going to happen. Turnovers. Uh, you don't have enough talent on the court. Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta get some more players. You need another point guard. Eventually, obviously, uh, you need another defensive wing or some type of defensive wing. You need a backup center that can play defense. I don't know whether or not Zach Collins fits for this team going forward. I have no idea, but the Spurs are going to make a lot of changes. And I really think what you need most of is just guys with high basketball IQ. If I'm being honest, high basketball IQ is what I prioritize. I don't care about the athleticism. I don't care about uh, I mean, obviously you got to have, have skill, but I guess I just care more about, um, uh, what's up there in, in, in your head, because honestly, Victor Wimbanyama, I mean, him and Mamu look beautiful out there. The way that they play is beautiful. Uh, yes, more Mamu and Ch yeah, Chetty Osman. Yeah. Chetty Osman as well. Even, even Trey Jones, Trey Jones made a lot of great cuts, a lot of great reads. Um, defensively, he had one play in particular where defensively it was very high IQ to stop uh, Tyrese Maxey from even getting the ball. It was it was very impressive. You just need more high IQ players around Wimby, and it's going to be really deadly making those right because Wimby's going to find you. You make the right the right the right cut, he's going to find you regardless. Like he's a, he's a very smart player. Uh, even that, oh my God, that's sick. It was a terrible pass by Malachi Branham, which I know what he was doing, but it was a bad pass by Malachi, and Wimmy nearly missed, or nearly turned it over and did that behind the back, knew exactly where his teammate was. It was just beautiful. That was beautiful. It was like, oh my gosh. Uh, you get some guys with very high IQ, and, and you're, you're, uh, you're crack lacking okay? So, but the negatives are just things that's been negative. And guys, I hate to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I don't really care. Keldon Johnson, man. I mean, Keldon, I, I I know there was a few plays where it was like, oh, yeah, good job, Keldon. But, guys, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he fits. I don't know. I don't know. I think the Spurs are really – I mean, they already have before, but I think they're going to be looking to move him. I, I, I don't – this isn't working. Defensively, it was so bad. It was so – oh, Keldon was so bad defensively. It's just getting worse and worse. I also found a metric that I wanted to show you. It's getting so bad. Uh, Keldon does not fit. He lacks defense. You need somebody with high IQ and can play better defense. Oh, no. Ruru's here. Oh, gosh. Ruru. No. Leave Keldon alone, man. He already hurt his ankle and out for the year now. I I know he hurt his ankle. I was, I was tweeting this before he even, like, hurt I, I was tweeting at the beginning of the game how bad his defense was it was bad like like 76ers just attacked him every single time i'm not gonna sit here and act like our team just has so much defense or anything i mean there were many a plays that Keldon wasn't involved in and and they were still easy uh lanes to the basket but i just don't think like basketball iq wise making the right reads defensively it, it's nothing that i think Keldon really brings that's helping this team I, I just don't really think i don't think he fits i just don't think he fits with the future that's all i'm saying he just doesn't fit he doesn't fit we've tried i don't think he fits i'm, I'm starting to kind of like 
starting to kind of I'm putting my foot down on this. I don't think Keldon Johnson fits with the team. I've, I've, I, there's no reason for me to dislike him. So if you think that there's like some strange reason for me not to like Keldon Johnson or some gripe I have against him or something, something personal. No, I actually like him as a person. I think he's really cool. And I hope wherever he goes, if he, if he leaves San Antonio, that he's very successful. I hope that he's successful with San Antonio if they choose to keep him. But I just don't see how he fits, man. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Um, I mean, the ball just moves so much better without him. And, and, and I think defensively is the part that really disheartening um, because this was the season that he said and, you know, Popovich said that his defense got to get better. And he said that he's going to be harping in on his defense. And, and it just hasn't gotten better. If anything, I feel like it's gotten worse. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think he'll be here. We already know he will be moved for the right deals, but why keep kicking him while he's down? I, I mean, I was—I mean, you're talking about kicking. I mean, I've been kicking Keldon when he was up too. So <laughs> I don't know. I've been when Spurs fans were saying that he's a star. I mean, I was like, no, he's not. He's—he's a—he's a role player. Uh, before we even knew we would get Wimby, I've been saying that. But yeah, it's just gotten it's just gotten worse. I I truly did think going into the season though he would benefit the most out out of having a Wimby, right? I thought okay he's a decent catch and shoot uh, player. Uh, it'll open up the paint quite a bit because Wimby has somewhat of an outside shot and he brings so much attention to himself. I I, I really did think that it would help him. I even thought defensively that Wimby could take some of the slack that Keldon's struggling with, but maybe Keldon to come in and be a little bit better defensively. So, but that is not the case. He's just gotten worse and he looks worse with Wimby. I just don't think he fits. So he's going to be somebody that probably has to go. Maybe we can do another tier list soon. I, I mean, I'm going live tomorrow anyway, so maybe we'll do that. We'll do another tier list on who should be traded and just update it. Um, I don't even remember how I had it laid out last time, but yeah, we, we need to take a look at that again. But, but anyways, I don't know. I, I know. I don't want to harp on it too much. You guys know how I feel about Keldon at this point. So uh, on the on the bad ends, the cons of the game, the bad stuff, you know, every 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 it was just 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 inexperience. That's all. Uh, a lot of turnovers. Um, but hey, positives. They fought hard. They fought hard. Popovich is a great coach. He, you can tell that these guys are coached up. And I really like that. Zach is just garbage to begin with. Zach. Zach isn't a bad player. It's just that he's being forced to play center. And when he's the only defender you have out there, he's going to look even worse. Uh, it, it's it's just a bad combination of some things, you know. But that's another thing. Zach Collins doesn't fit with Wimby as much as we thought, right? The whole idea of the beginning of the season was he was supposed to help stretch the floor for Wimby, and he just hasn't. He doesn't fit that well. Uh, he's a good passer, but, yeah, he just he, – he doesn't fit but if he's coming off the bench and maybe he can be power forward and we can get some center out there to run with him maybe that'll help a little bit more but i yeah i mean i would much rather have don barlow getting minutes um not to say don barlow is a much better player than, than zach collins by any means um he still has to grow uh as a player but i i yeah yeah collins can't be the supplement for wimby next season to drop off uh is too big yeah, he, he can't be like yeah exactly, he and he's just not a, he's just not a center right. That's that's the only thing we're we're leaning too heavy on him, um, and maybe it'll help also if we get some other defenders, you know, around Zach Collins because he plays hard you know. Um, draft uh, Zach at no 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 no. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, there was something else I was gonna mention about this game. Oh, I know what I was going to mention. I saw somebody so some positives. I saw somebody say, like, get rid of Julian Champagne. I think I just saw that in the chat. Who said that? Um, okay, I just want to say this. Out of the last few games, or maybe several games, Julian Champagne is one of those guys, maybe even since starting, if I'm being honest. He's one of those guys where I don't necessarily think getting rid of him is necessary. I actually think he fits really well. Um, you know, I, I, especially with Wimby, when we're talking about the future, who fits with Wimby, I think Julian Champagne fits with Wimby very well. It, it seems like they got quite a bit of chemistry. 
I, I think the only problem with Julian is he's starting. That's it. And that's not his fault. It's just the roster. And I, I, once we get another uh, wing, I think he's going to be even more impressive than what he is. The fact that he's able to perform the way that he's been performing against starters um, at times, you know, not all the time, but at times, but defensively, he's been really, really, really good, I think. Um, you know, hitting very key shots and, and timely shots. Uh, I, I think I think he's going to be much better if he can just run against bench units. He fits in fine. He's he's like the perfect backup. If we get some type of defensive um, uh, wing, another defensive wing, he's like a perfect backup to him. Like seriously. So I don't think Ju Julian Champagne is like a bad player or anything. Um, I think he's fine. Get rid of Branham. Um, Okay, we're going to do a list, but Malachi is one of those where he's good. He is good. Um, he's resorted to being more of a catch and shoot three point shooter. And that's unfortunate because I don't think that he is that. I mean, you know, unfortunately, like um, even though he's done it pretty well in this game in particular, he did it very well. Uh, that's not his game and his game is more so predicated off of the pick and roll and being the primary ball handler and with that because when you when you got malachi branham you were really in a position where you're trying to get the guys with the most potential on where you were sitting you know you didn't know what this team would look like and you didn't know for a fact you would eventually get victor Wembanyama, right you were going to try but you didn't know if you would get him and malachi might just be one of those leftover guys that you can possibly still fit or you know you do have to move him i don't know but as it stands i think that he's been doing a pretty good job at least the last week or so um you know he, he, he's been okay but defensively it is dreadful i mean we can't we can't lie here it has been god awful um but hey if you can have him come off the bench and kind of be more of a spark plug maybe if you can have him come off the bench and um uh, facilitate for the second unit as he gets better maybe i don't know it's 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 not going to be an easy discussion i think uh for the spurs he's replaceable I, th I think there's quite a few guys that are pretty replaceable if we're being honest um let's see come on clan champagne sucks uh matthew said that uh i don't think so i don't think julian champagne sucks i think that julian champagne is just not a starter you got to just contextualize these guys, right? Like you got to put them compartmentalize, you know, your, your thoughts on them. Like I, if, if Julian Champagne is supposed to be like our expectations was Julian Champagne is supposed to be like the third option to Wimby, then yeah, obviously he sucks. Right. But if you're trying to look at it as in, Hey, does he play his role? Well, does he make the right reads? Uh, is he patient? Cause he's usually pretty patient. Um, does he make timely shots? Does he play good defense? Uh, all those things he does, it's just that his talent level isn't on the level of a starting small forward. He's not that. He needs to come off the bench. And I think off the bench, he'll be way better. And, and most importantly, out of all the things about Julian Champagne, he does fit with Wimby. Like, they play well off of each other. Julian Champagne is a, is a smart player. He plays smart defensively. He plays smart on the offensive end. He is a smart player. Now, is he... Is he, I mean, we're talking talent. I mean, I'm not saying like, oh, he got the talent level of, of, um, of, I don't know who, who we want to throw out there. Um, Malachi, I don't even know if his like offensively, he's as talented as Malachi or anything like that, but he has some sneaky athleticism. He's a smart player. He fits with Wimby. That's all you guys for. He plays good defense. That's a perfect guy to come off the bench. That, 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 that makes it, that makes it exhausting, uh, for the opponent. If you have somebody like him coming off the bench and he plays hard every single play as well i agree keep julian for next year because of his iq yeah he has he has high basketball iq he doesn't have bad like he's not he's not a bad player he doesn't suck oh no i prefer champagne to malachi all day um yeah i mean malik i mean I, th I do think that malachi offensively his talent um and potential is higher than julian's like i, th I think much better than Julian, much higher than Julian's. Uh, but yeah, I, I I do think that Julian fits with Wimby better than Malachi. Barlow has a good shot to become a Wimby's backup. 
Uh, not Wimby's backup, right? He will be, um, well, I don't know. I don't know how this roster is going to look, but he'll be back up to probably, um, um, Sohan. Chetty Osman over Malachi and Julian. Uh, yeah, I like, I like Chetty Osman, but I think that he's even more replaceable than Julian, to be honest with you. Julian's defense is what sets it apart for me. But, I mean, Chetty Osman is, Chetty Osman is cool. Barlow doesn't fit the timeline. By the time Collins' contract is over in two years, he's probably not going to be good enough to be back up power forward in the postseason. How does Barlow not fit the... Barlow's young. Barlow's, like, super young. How old is Barlow? 21? 20? What timeline? Yeah, like... Yeah, Barlow's, like, really young. He's, like, 20? Yeah, yeah. Well, he fits the timeline of all the rest of the guys. Collins is effing whack. Ah, oh, man. I think it's such a tough thing with Zach Collins because I can't just sit here and just say, like, with a straight face, oh, he's trash, oh, he's a really bad player. I just I just think where he fits, man, is, is bad. Like, he's not a he's not a backup to Wimby. He's not a backup center at all. Um, he's much better in, in, in small doses, you know. If, if we have – if we had enough talent and you – you know, Zach Collins would have, like, he wouldn't stand out as bad. I think that's the big thing. He just stands out as really bad, even though he's playing hard and, you know, he might be making the right uh, reads here and there. But he just stands out. He just stands out as really bad because he has to be the primary defender off the bench, which is really tough. Because we all knew, even getting Zach Collins, we all knew he wasn't, like, a, a, a defensive center. It's, come on. You see, Collins was not meant to be backup center. His role changed when Bassey got hurt. Yeah. I call up Josh Richardson again in free agency. <laughs> uh, you see, I agree, Alex. What did Alex say? We got to get rid of Collins and keep Barlow, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean... Look, I mean, I think Don Barlow definitely needs to be power forward. You know, we don't want him being center. Um, if Bassey, if the Spurs believe in Bassey and think that he can stay healthy, I say keep him. But if not, just try to get you another defensive center. Main thing this offseason, I think you need some more defenders. You need a um, defensive wing, most importantly. Backup defensive center. Um, yeah, I think you're a little bit better. Y'all don't remember Spurs fans, do? I'll call it Jonathan Simmons. Uh, you don't want you don't want Jonathan Simmons. Go look up Jonathan Simmons' uh, recent highlights. He is not the same Jonathan Simmons. All that athleticism, yeah, that's not there no more. Also, I don't even think he would fit with uh, with Wimby. He fit more with uh, Kawhi than he would with Wimby. Get someone to help Wimby. Well, it's coming. Help's coming, but yeah, unfortunate loss, but it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. All right, let's see. So there's something I was going to show. ever heard of dpm that acronym dpm darko um i just want to show you this and i am going to read 
a snippet. Like the Xbox headset, bro. Were you the one in the other live stream where you were like, I like the like Nintendo headset? You're just messing with me. Obviously, it's a PlayStation headset. You're just messing with me. I end up getting the uh, new PlayStation headset, uh, the Elites. So I just brought these over here. I was like, yeah, I'll just use it for live streams, whatever. Uh, so I want to show you guys this um, for an explanation of what Darko is, if you weren't familiar. So we're talking about Julian Champagny versus Keldon Johnson at this point. And... Um, it's not a good thing. It's not a beautiful thing. Uh, so Godforsaken place named Reddit. Uh, you got you guys might have heard of it. Uh, someone posted exactly what Darko means. And I think that it's, you know, it's a good explanation to say the least. So he says Darko's metrics uh, DPM is similar to other advanced impact metrics that it measures a player's value above below average per 100 possessions. Unlike most basketball metrics, Darko is a forward looking projection of current talent rather than backwards looking valuation of past impact. NBA executives say it is the most or useful publicly available metric. Actually, let me make sure that's where do you get this from? As far as the executives thing. Oh, okay, I see. More reception in all one metric captures the impact players can have when they don't log a box score event. Okay, so former head of analytics for the Utah Jazz. Okay, all right, and then here is an NBA executive from the Western Conference. The next phase of basketball and analytics is all about context-dependent numbers. Mm -mm. Let's see, where is DPM? That's BPM. Did I miss it? Raptor, Braun. The winner of our composite metric survey goes to Darko. This is an application developed by, I'm not, I'm not gonna try that. Uh, their website defines Darko as a machine learning driven basketball player box score, uh, score, box score, score projection system, similar to MLB's, I don't watch MLB, Picota and Zips. Uh, their application update daily for every player in the NBA. The tool has inputs from NBA.com, Basketball Reference, and B... Oh, I never used this website. PBPStats.com. Darko also accounts for time series and sample size using the complex methods of a ex exponential decay and Kalman filters to take all historical data into account. This is a huge breakthrough because when using possession level data, uh, it can be tricky to tease out the signal from the noise. And oftentimes one season of data is not enough to ensure the proper accounting, blah, 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 blah. So basically just looking at what can potentially occur here. Uh, so as you can see, as far as, as time has gone on, and I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure this right here is the year in which we were highly reliant on Keldon Johnson. Um, and around this time, I'm pretty sure, I, I think this is around when we were really relying on Keldon. But since then, and as you can see, since getting Wimby, it has definitely went down. His DPM has went down. Julian Champagny has improved and it looks like it's on the up and up. Obviously he'll come down to earth as time goes on. But as it stands right now, he is on the up keldon's on the bottom this actually comes from a pretty funny uh tweet here from matthew in which he says keldon johnson transferred his only remaining power level or power level power left this season to julian champagne via a bite to the head uh and then we can see that my boy here jay you can't see him here, jay he said he transferred that power long ago uh so it's it's just a bad it's just a bad uh mids i don't know it's just going it's just it's just a bad looking future i saw that yeah it, it's it's a bad looking future guys it, it's not good <laughs> it's not good um i'm not once again i'm not sitting here saying that you know keldon is a bad player or his bpm wouldn't go back up with another team 
I just think that with Wimby, he just doesn't fit and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, so just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you weren't aware, uh, just a few or advanced analytics here just to take a look at, but it is what it is. Kelton is a chucker. He needs to go. Um, yeah, too much tunnel vision, way too much tunnel vision. I mean, now I know that he's hurt. He might be out for the rest of the season. I have no idea. Uh, I think Ruru said earlier that he might be out for the rest of the season. I don't know, but um, it, it just hasn't been good. And it also just seems like, just from the eye test, honestly, it seems like he's gotten slower as well. So I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Maybe Keldon's last game, low key, might be. Yeah, he's just gotten slower. I was talking to uh, Switch Hill. You guys know my best friend in real life, Switch Hill. Uh, he ended up telling me that he noticed it every year. I personally didn't, but he said every year as the season goes on, Keldon seems to get slower. Like he he he, pound, he gets on you know a little weight or puts on a little weight or whatever, and then he becomes a little slower. So I never noticed it, but I'll take his word for it. I just noticed it this season. That I saw that. What is Keldon's trade value like? I, I have I have no idea what Keldon's trade value is like, man. Um, I would like to think that you could get a first for Keldon, at least one first, but I am not a hundred percent sure to be honest. I would have had a better answer for you earlier this season. Or even last season, it, it's really tough to tell. I don't know how. I I, I can't even I, I can't even think about how other teams would view them. Um, but obviously, the Spurs would need to hold off, right? I mean, you have to hold off anyway. But maybe after this season's over and a few teams are out of the playoffs, then they might think adding in a Keldon Johnson would benefit them. Honestly, if Keldon is on a team that has much more defenders or a defensive system in which. Uh, they they can kind of hide him a little bit more. He'll be he'll be better off, and they'll be able to utilize him a little bit better. And he can bring some some grit coming off the bench. It's just with the Spurs, we can't hide him. There is no hiding him because we don't have enough defenders. And I don't know if I will go out of my way to keep that spot for Keldon as we grow and as we get better defenders. When right now, how it looks, he doesn't necessarily fit with Wimby. If he was really young, I mean he is young. All right, like. He is young, but if he was like near Wimby's age, or this was like his first, second year in the league, third year in the league, then maybe I would be a little bit more charitable. At this point, he's the longest tenured spur. He looks kind of one of the worst. Basketball IQ is necessarily there. He's he's always um, um, having tunnel vision. Defense is not there. It's just one of those things where I'm, I'm ready to just kind of let it go, you know. Trey Keldon for Primo straight up. Yes, sure. <laughs> Whatever. Let's not do that, actually. But anyways, wanted to bring it to your attention. I don't know. Cole just shouted out Kendrick Lamar at Dreamville Fest while performing Under the Sun during Kendrick's hook. Tell him, Dot. Did that happen? Why'd he do that? J. Cole on not wanting to diss Kendrick Lamar paraphrasing. I haven't been sleeping right the last few days. 
we taking that disc off streaming services? There's no, is this real? This can't be real. Is this real? Kendrick over J. Cole? Yeah, easily. J. Cole over Drake? Um, I'm going to be honest. As far as rapping ability, yes, J. Cole over Drake. As far as who's had a more, like, a bigger impact on hip-hop as a whole, I would say Drake. I mean, you can't ignore the Take Care album. I mean, that, that album is phenomenal. I mean, it is really phenomenal. I don't know if there's anything J. Cole has that's... I mean, people might say Force or Force Hill, Force Hill Drive, but um, I don't know. That that Take Care is phenomenal. Is he really going to delete it? There's no way. Is this person reliable? Jaw talks me. 70K followers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's lying. Looks like he's got probably got some credibility. What do you say about you? Jiz just announced on his IG Live that he finished and turned in his album. 2024 keeps on heating up. Oh my God. Yes. Heck yeah. We got a Jid album coming. We got a Ski Mask album coming. We got an Eminem album coming. What the heck? And we probably got another Kendrick uh, disc coming. Ah. Oh. Hip hop is back. Hip hop is back. All right, let's see. What else do we have on here? All right, so I didn't mention this, uh, but our boy Wimby, he actually lost us this game, okay? This game, this, this past game against the 76ers, he lost it. He lost it for the Spurs because he was actually training Tyrese Maxey uh, in 2022 okay he was training him two years ago tim martin if you don't know tim martin he's worked with many different nba athletes a lot of talent um that's the connection between wimby and uh, uh trey young obviously we've talked about tim martin so many times uh seems like a great trainer and all the guys are all the you know head honchos okay uh big honchos they they like to work with them uh, but yeah, so apparently Wimby did have a workout. Oh my God, that's loud. So he says here, Vic just wanted to work on defense and Reese wanted to work on attacking the bigs off the switch. It was fun watching these guys go at it. So it is it is definitely Wimby's fault why this this guy put up 50 points on us. He played 54 minutes? My god, 52. He had 52 points during that game. Uh only 12 free throws for those 52. Well, 12 free throws quite a bit, but still really impressive. Uh but Wimby, Wimby also had a good game, right? So Wimby had 33 points, 18 rebounds. Um and uh, six assists and seven blocks, my God, but nine turnovers. Ooh, that's bad. But our entire team had was really bad with the turnovers. But um, yeah, so just another connection. If you guys were interested, you know, not one of those things where we can speculate on is anything going to happen or these guys got any type of uh, chance of playing together in the future. None, none of that, none of that mess, right? It's just the fact that they have worked together. And it's just kind of crazy to look back and see like, wow, yeah, a lot of these guys – you know been playing against nba talent for a while 43 minutes is Wimby okay oh during this game i felt like it was a big chunk I mean, maybe it's just me i'll have to go back and look but it was a big chunk of this game where Wimby didn't play like was it in the end the, the end of the first quarter and it was a big chunk of the second quarter he didn't come in at all i think that's where most of his his minutes got taken away but i don't know i mean he was there for the fourth basically the fourth and both overtime so there's that anyways just good stuff just fun stuff nonetheless just bring maxi in yeah i know right is it the metro boomin jid album is that what's going on 
don't know. Rolling Stone says, J. Cole brought a knife to a gunfight on 7 Minute Drill. I guess. I don't know. He brought no energy in that. And I know people were like, last live stream, they were like, uh, or a few people were like, well, come on, clan. Like, J. Cole just didn't take it that serious. And I'm like, dude. He started off the song talking about, I got killers, I got shooters. You know, they asking, should I take care of them? Like, if you're going to start off your song like that, man, you, you just go in. But it was so, like, monotone and the flow was just the same thing he always does. You get you get glued to, like, your ears get glued to the speakers when Kendrick raps. Uh, the way that he, he changed up his cadences, um, the amount of energy that he brings. Even when he's not bringing as much energy, it's interesting enough that he has double, triple, quadruple entendres that makes you want to re-listen and say, what the heck did he just say? Um, that's just not the that's just not the case with Jay, J. Cole. Hmm. Bro, I'm so tired of Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar is like top tier though. Oh, well, I hope for our, our Denver game he plays then. We play Denver again? Here, let me look at the Spurs. All right, let's see. You have the 76ers, the Grizzlies. Oh, okay, the Nuggets is next to last. Okay. Uh, who are we talking about? Do you hope he... Are you talking about Wimby? Because Wimby said he wants to... Oh, yeah. We probably need to look at that. Yeah, so Wimby is... An old school. All right? he's, he's, an, he's an old school superstar. Uh, you don't you don't get them you don't get them like this anymore, right? Uh, so Victor Wembanyama play plans to play the rest of the season. I made a commitment to this team, um, and it, it's only a few games. So Wemby has played quite a few games this season. Um, so, and we all know that a lot of Rockets fans wanted him to be hurt. No, they literally wanted him to like die. I don't know. Like, like they they hate Wimby. They hate Wimby over there at Houston. Oh, they hate Wimby. Um, but here's a quote here. It's just my mentality. Wimby said in an interview with Jeff McDonald, uh, I made a commitment to this team. I have a responsibility towards the organization and the team and the fans. So there's no reason to sit out. So yeah, he's going to play or at least attempt to play the rest of the season. It's going to literally take the San Antonio Spurs yanking him for him not to play. Also, we know that Victor has been very adamant in trying to get into games early on, like where he would literally get up and just try to force himself into a game. And Pop's like, hey, stop that. Knock that off. Go sit down, right? Um, so yeah, you just you just don't get them like this anymore, man. It's, this makes you excited. This gets you excited, right? I said it's start of the season. Wimby floor is Duncan's ceiling. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Wimby is at his floor right now, and he's nowhere near Duncan's ceiling. Calm down. Calm down. Statistic, statistically, he's doing well, but no, no. He's nowhere near Duncan, right? Nowhere near Duncan's prime. Not even close. Not even close. Duncan was an absolute, you could just go to him every single time. It wasn't even close. Yeah, don't, don't do that. We know, we're not going to do that. All right, guys, give me, give me one second. One second.
All right. Okay, guys. So I said I'll be on an hour. So we're almost at that hour mark. Let's do one more. And then we'll go live tomorrow. We'll, we'll finish everything up. You guys want to see a fun fact here's you ready for a fun fact i i had no idea this was even a thing um what i guess this happens all the time when it comes to like rich people right but whew, trey jones bought house that was previously owned by stone cold steve austin shout out to dylan for posting this but this was on express news what the heck san antonio spurs guard trey jones and his wife madeline in late august paid an amount likely close to 1.3 million listing price for a five bed i'm actually shocked i'm actually shocked it's only 1.3 million okay i am i am very shocked the reason why i'm very shocked is because uh you know you get a house that's like two bedrooms and that's 1.3 million dollars uh yeah uh you, you can't you can't get a house you're a millennial or younger uh yeah good, good luck trying to get a house right now uh, hopefully that gets better. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, 1.3 million listing price for a five bedroom, uh, house that was previously owned by Stone Cold Steve Austin. What the heck? Tennessee is expensive. Uh, yeah. I mean, everywhere is expensive. Yeah. You know where I really want to live? I want to live in Washington. I think that would be cool. I want to live in Washington. Heck yeah. I'm going to visit Seattle next year. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check out the vibes. I'll check out the vibes. I also like Colorado. I've been to um, I've been to Denver, around the Denver area. It was pretty nice, especially Loveland. I really like Loveland. Um, but yeah, so isn't that cool? I don't know if you guys have ever watched like wrestling, but I was really into wrestling as a kid. My favorite wrestler was Goldberg. Um, it was Goldberg, and I really liked Rey Mysterio. Those those were some of my favorites. And then I like Mark Henry, but I only liked him for his theme song because it was a uh, three, six mafia, you know, me being from Memphis and all. Hold on. I want to see something. I brought this up just out of curiosity. IGN did a top 25 wrestling list and I want to see who's on here. We're on, let's see Rowdy Piper, AJ Styles, Bryson Davis. Let's see. What CM Punk's pretty high on this list. Rey Mysterio, that's my boy. Andre the Giant, that's before my time. Roman Reigns, I feel like I was starting to get out of wrestling around this era. Edge, that's a bad image of Edge. There's better images of Edge. Mike Foley, really? Huh. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold says so. Gosh, it was so fun. Early 2000s was so fun. Sometimes I go back and I like, I'm like, oh, was it just my nostalgia talking? And then I actually watched the footage from those times. And it's like, no, it's not just nostalgia. It actually was better. <laughs> like, cause I can go back and watch a movie that's like, I'm nostalgic for it and then recognize, oh, it's trash. Like Cradle to the Grave. Like I loved that as a kid because I was a huge DMX fan. They had the Eminem. I was an Eminem fan too. So they had the Eminem song at the beginning of it. I was a big Jet Li fan. I loved it as a kid. Went back and watched it. That movie's trash. So like, I can recognize when nostalgia is just that nostalgia, but no, dude, it, it was a great um, era. What happened with Eddie Greer? Didn't he pass? How did he pass? Was it, was it a car accident? I don't remember. Randy Savage. I thought he would be higher. Kurt Angle. Hulk Hogan. I'm surprised Hogan's only 10. Sting. Um my dad got a sting autograph recently at a uh, convention so triple h i can see that john cena john cena is cool man rick flair rick flair was fun 
Brett Hitman Hart. Uh, that's before my era. The Rock. I can see that. He's super funny. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was cool. Oh, yeah. His 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 theme song was awesome. Wasn't it the Sexy Boy theme song? I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. He was cool. Undertaker. And hey, Stone Cold Steve Austin is number one for them. Hey. DMX worse so? I am so confused. What the heck? What do you mean? What do you mean by DMX? DMX is awesome. Heart attack caused by drugs. He was taking... Oh, okay. Eddie Greer. Okay. That's tough. Hey, interesting. But, hey. Uh, WWE is... It was fun. I tried to watch it recently. Just to, like, you know, see what it's like. And, God, it's so watered down, man. It's so watered down. I... I ugh. It's so lame now. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, my era of WWE definitely had some problematic, problematic, problematic uh, things to it or whatever. But good gosh, it's like Disney Channel now. Like they're just trying to appease like the largest of, of audiences of like trying to make sure kids are good. I won't watch WWE until it's back to TV 14. Is it even? Yeah, because it doesn't feel like TV 14 now. So it's not even TV 14 now? Ah, oh, so terrible. Then there was X was the best DMX album. Oh, DMX worst actor. DMX, oh yeah. Acting wise, it wasn't that great. Make me an offer. That was terrible. WWE is currently called the PG era. Oh, really? So it's not just me? Because like, I, when I was watching it, I was like, I don't remember it being this watered down. Like, it just felt so watered down. Is DMX dead? Yeah, he passed away. Um, I think it was drugs. He, he always had a drug problem. TV 14 was gone by 08. Oh, my gosh. It's like, it needs a little bit of edginess. Like, it, 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 it keeps it funny. Keeps it fun. Keeps the stakes high, man. I couldn't get into it at all. I was just like, what is this? None of these people are in the modern. Well, I guess they wouldn't have enough time to be on this list. But, I mean, John Cena kind of. But like, John Cena was like, when he got popular, that's around the time I kind of stopped watching around then. I think the last big event I watched was him going against Randy Orton. Uh, Pay-per-view. That was cool bring back steroids uh yeah let's not let's not do that it's just it's just the storylines were funnier back then and maybe you can have it like pg and still be interesting i don't know i don't know it's definitely not as fun good for hulk hogan for still being alive uh hulk hogan is like He's kind of a piece of crap, so. That PG is just for kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So it's Vince McMahon. Yeah. Hulk oh, Kobe coming for you. Oh, he's a great, I mean, he was a great wrestler, you know. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. All right, guys, I'm getting off. Uh, that's all I got for now. I'll be back on tomorrow. We'll talk more Spurs. Next Spurs game is Tuesday. Maybe I'll go live on my way back because I'll be driving. So maybe we'll go live for a minute on Tuesday night. I don't know. Getting off. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting off here. I'll give it to you guys later, man. Uh, don't want it to get too late. I promise myself I'll only be on an hour, and it is at the hour mark. Um, but we'll go back on tomorrow. You know, we got at least, I think five, five, uh, subjects that we need to go over. So we'll get that done. 
All right. Yeah, GSG. All right, y'all. Deuces, deuces. Oh, I probably should have said this. Um, once again, if you guys want to support the channel, there's one way you can do it. ClanTheMerchFan.com. Link in the description. Um, yeah, ClanTheMerchFan.com. I actually like this one a lot. This is still my favorite. This is still my favorite. My, um, my girlfriend actually came up with this idea. So, so yeah, Invader Whim. So, yeah, guys, uh, support the channel, man. Good stuff. Fire pop. Nah, let's keep let's keep pop. Let's, let's keep pop actually. Let's keep pop. Let's keep them. <clears throat> Alright, y'all. Deuces, deuces.